Mm-hmm. Okay, so do you know what the halting problem is? Not a clue. Excellent. Bria, do you know? Oh, that sounds familiar. Excellent. Okay. So first thing is uh, just some basic stuff. We're going to be talking, all the examples are going to be in Python. Hmm. Uh, that I do know. And we're going to be talking about programs in a kind of mathematical sense, so they're not going to use anything like randomness or system time. They're just going to be deterministic computations that are always the same. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. And uh, when we call two programs equal, we're going to be saying that they're equal if their output is the same. For the same input. Okay. Yeah, so not that their text is the same, that they do the same thing. Okay. I mean, like, we don't care what they're doing on the inside as long as yes. you put in something and get the same thing out. doesn't matter what happens in between. Yes. So we're going to do some examples first, and you're going to tell me if the program I show you stops. Okay. okay. You mean, like, ever, or...? Yes. If it ever returns? Yes. Okay. Exactly. So does this program stop? Yes. <laughs> Good. Let's see if I can stop you. Does this program stop? No. No. Yeah. Even though it has a return three, it lies. No, it's there. So uh, we can call this loop forever, and then whenever we need a loop forever program, I'm just gonna say this because. Oh, no, see, the answer is right there in the title. Yeah, yeah I didn't even read the title. <laughs> Yeah. It wasn't that a second ago. You got it. Oh, do you guys have delay on Skype? Oh, I see. Okay, so I'm not that inattentive. Oh. Yeah. yeah so that would have been too easy. Ah, okay. But yes, this loops forever. What about this program? <clears throat> yep. I mean, yep, it's... it loops forever. It loops forever. Kirk, what do you think? Uh, well, unless there's um. Uh. Over underflow. How is there going to be underflow, Kirk? <laughs> well, you keep on subtracting. Down, like, the lowest int, then it'll come back up it'll to the biggest. to the highest. But, yeah. but what, what, what does the condition in the while loop say? If n is greater than 1. So is there going to be underflow? Right. Yeah, so if, if, if 1 keeps on going... But you or if it... n keeps on getting lower and lower and lower and lower, farther away from one. Oh no 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 no! You're right. It, it'll return. Yeah, because it starts. Oh oh pass. yes, yes right. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this this returns one. Yeah. All right. right. See, we, were, we were just watching. We knew it was going to happen. <laughs> I was okay. expecting there to be some other trick, and <laughs> no no no. There was a trick, just not the one I expected. Not right. not quite yet. Okay. The next How one's about... going to be a trick, though, right? How about this program? That one's the trick. Does, does this I'm stop? I'm really carefully it... now. No, unless there's overflow. Looks like it stops. I'm sorry, no, it looks like it doesn't stop. Right. It and stops. it starts at 10, then it's 11, then it's 12, and it's still greater than 1. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Unless it loops around and goes forever. Exactly. This is why I, this is why I need an audience to record this because yeah, it, and that's why you need to actually like look at what's happening instead of just saying the answer that you think you see. Oh, someone's being passive aggressive. Anyway, no, 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 that was <laughs> just me. So it's like, me just like yeah, of course. I'm okay, so now as a question for Kirk and not Bria. Uh, okay. Do you think it's possible to write a program that can tell if another program stops? I'm pretty sure you've told me no in the past. <laughs> if I hadn't told you no, well, okay, that's, well, that's... If you hadn't told me no, I'd probably assume that it would be possible. Okay, well, let's just pretend I didn't tell you, and that is possible. <laughs> I would think that, I think, I think without intervention, I might assume that it's possible. Okay, and that brings us to our last little example. What about this program? Uh, when is, oh, wait, your part of the comment is cut off. It's just one oh, this is one is national number. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh... Okay, I know this ends, but that's that's only because I have seen this before. What what is what is it? It it always ends up being one. Does it? That's what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually know for this example. It's called the the. Oh, okay, right. But but everything that anyone's the... ever tested, it ends up being one. Yes, so so we don't actually know if this this ever goes on forever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very possible it doesn't. It's called the three m plus one problem. Right. There's no proof. Yeah. So we know that specific specific ends go to one. Every specific end we've ever tested goes to one, but we don't know that all of them do. <laughs> Math is a very different world than physics. <laughs> uh, but not in the same world. Let's let's not take a, too much of a digression yet. Uh, no less. Sorry. So let's say we. Uh, so I kind of snuck something in here where, at first we were comparing things without param uh, parameters, and then I said, "Oh, well, yeah. is this? It, does this stop for any n?" Mm -hmm. So, do you think those problems? What do you think is the difficulty for those problems? Do you think they're? Do you think one is easier than the other? To determine, to write a program to determine if another program finishes? Yeah. So do you think it would be easier to write a program to determine if another program finishes? Now when you say input, does that also include any other like environmental variables that might be different? Well, we aren't considering any environmental All variables. Alright, so just... That those don't exist in this. Okay. Then I would say that without input would be way easier because you just run it once and it's deterministic. Yes. yes. So you could do that. You can write a, you can have a program and you create a new program that just ignores the arguments. All right. Okay. And then you run your does it halt program on that. Now, what about the other way? Wait, can you go back to the way. previous slide? Yes. Okay, all right. So this all makes sense? I think so. Yes. Okay. Do you think going the other way works? If you have a, if you have a program that can tell, if you have a program that says does it halt, that can tell if the program halts mm -hmm. for a single piece of input, can you tell if it halts for all pieces of input, all possible inputs? I would say no, because I see inputs breaking things all the time when we get inputs oh, that we no, didn't no, expect. Don't, don't, don't think about don't think about practical stuff. Okay. Your, um... If you had this program, you could do it by writing this program. I was assuming you know all the possible arguments. Yeah, of course you do. Because you can just encode them as numbers and count up. No, oh, no, wait, wait. <laughs> So, you loop over every possible argument, possibly just saying, starting at argument 0, argument 1, argument 2, argument 3. It's going all the way up. Right. And if that particular program runs forever, if that thing ever runs forever, then you stop this program. Wait. <laughs> and, if it, and if it doesn't, then you keep running. What if you have an infinite number of possible arguments? That's right. right. It runs forever. If you, if it... If it runs infinitely on any one of them, it'll stop in a finite amount of time. Wait, what? So if it if it, on that thing it stops on one billion, you count up zero, one, two, three, four. Yes. Every one of these, it's it it goes down to one in the three n plus one problem. Okay. If on number a billion, it doesn't. If on number a billion it runs forever, this this is false. So this whole statement is true. So then this thing returns so okay never... otherwise it'll loop forever if every single number always went to one a three m plus one problem <laughs> this, this would loop forever <laughs> and if it didn't and if so you're saying if... Okay. Example, okay it would always hit a point where it where it did that's really hard to say in a sentence yeah that's why i made a slide for it yeah i see that <laughs> and to follow it up on this side 
So you run your does it halt program on that program, and if it returns true, you know that there's a uh, uh, true uh, the original program loops forever on some input. That's a weird sentence. And if it's false, the original program stops on all inputs. So that's my confusion right. there, because like if you have an infinite number of inputs, then it's just going to run through there forever. Well, that's the point, because you can tell if a program does that. If you have but this, that's... Does it, if you have this does it halt program, you can tell if it does that, and we, we're assuming we did. No, but like the outside program. Yeah. What don't you like about so that? So like new program. We have nothing right. preventing new programming from running. So we have, we can, does it halt will not actually, I assume we won't actually execute the program because if no, it did, it would No, it will do some kind of analysis on it. Right, right. And but it, new program it, is actually executing, so it could run forever. No, 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 no. It, it's never actually executing. Wait, what? New program is never actually executing? No. Oh. Uh, some kind of analysis on it to see if it runs forever or not. Mm. That's what does it halt does. It takes in the program... Oh. As a program, not as a, uh, and it doesn't run it. Oh, I see. So you're saying, it okay, so. It doesn't necessarily so... run it. Running it may be some part of its analysis. Sorry for the squeaking. My dog is trying to play with me. <laughs> as long as he stays on camera, that's fine. As long as he stays on camera? Yeah, yeah. I think that makes it more distracting. Well, I want to look at a dog. <laughs> this is, this is gonna it's so cute. Great. This is going to be a great video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So. So does that make sense, as far as it goes? Yes. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to look at this does it halt program. It's going to be left as an exercise to you guys. No, I'm joking. Uh, oh, for after takes, class or for right now? It. All we know that it does is that it takes a program, and it takes the program's arguments, and it returns true if the program stops at those arguments, and it run, returns false if the program runs forever. Does that sound good? Yes. yes. It always returns true or false. So if we have that, we can write this good program. Mm -hmm. Or we can just feed it it's in our program. program. Yeah, we can feed it in before we start, and it'll run the program, and it'll check to see if the program runs forever. And if it runs forever, it'll tell us so we don't have to waste all our time. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, okay. We also, but we also... Sorry, sorry what? No, no, go on. Mm -hmm. We also get this bad program. So this bad program is kind of constructed in a very... Bad. It's constructed in a very specific way to make, make a specific problem happen. So you don't have to see the problem yet. Just kind of skim this program and agree that it can only end in two ways. It either returns true or it loops forever. That sounds good. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay. Because there's I'm concerned about it running on it. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Because there's an if statement, and it either returns returns true or loops forever. It does either only one of those two things. Okay. And it takes a program. So if we feed bad into itself, there are only two ways this can end. So let's look at the first one. Let's assume it stops and returns true. So. What does does it halt when bad is applied to bad? We know that that's true because that's what we assumed it was. So this is true. Yeah. So this loops forever. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. It, it can't be true, right? Oh, right. Yeah. So maybe maybe the program loops forever. So let's try that one. Let's assume it loops forever. Mm -hmm. So if we assume it loops forever, then does it halt returns false, and it stops. Okay. Does that argument make sense? Yeah. Because this program, because you can build. I this understand program, that you're proving it doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. So if you have, so you can build this program if you have this does it halt program. Right. Because we're just constructing it with a very simple, you know, it loops forever, it returns true, and you have an if else. Those are the only things this program needs if you have that. Since we assume you can do all those things, that means this program can't exist. 
this does it halt cannot exist. Okay. Now, does that sound good to both of you? Mm, I don't yes, know. I kind of like your voice. Like I want that program to exist. Okay, but so it it really should feel uneasy to you, for reasons that are become become apparent in a few minutes. But the is argument is sound. That? I just want to make sure you you understand the argument, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 I understand the argument. So let's. Flash let's... program cannot exist because it would. It's logically paradox. Yeah, it's 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 yes. contradictory. Yeah. So let's let's back up and let's let's pretend I'm I'm some genius dude and I have my own like interesting problem that I want to talk about programs. And it's gonna be. You are a genius. Man. Is it? It's gonna be. Does the program output three? Does the program three? Yes. So we're gonna do some examples again. Does this program output three? Output three? Yes. Excellent. Yes. How about this one? No. no. Okay. But wait a second. Do you think we can write a program that checks to see if every program outputs three? Seems good. Yeah. Kirk, what do you think? I'll say yes, but I feel like I'm being tricked. Because you are. Well, what about the bad program? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I get it. Okay. So, can you can you guess what's going to happen? Uh, well, it's it's much like the previous one where it's a paradox. Well, yeah, but but do you do you understand the steps again? Yes. So either we assume so that you, it returns four. So you, which... you take yeah. Well, I did the three case first, so. Right. Uh, and if it does, then it would return four, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and vice versa. Yeah. Okay, so how about if the program is even? Right, okay. So, yeah. Is, is example one even? Yes. And is example two even? No. Can we, yeah. can we, can we make a program that tells if any program outputs Are you an even number? Us again? Well, I don't like... know. Do you... Are you going to trick us with the same thing? I don't know. Are you going to fool for the same thing? Yes. <laughs> we'll fall for it again. I'm pretty yes. sure we can write this program. This is good. Okay. It's totally possible. What about this? Oh, crap. <laughs> I didn't see that <laughs> <laughs> So what happens here? You, you take Wait, it's the same thing. It's the same yeah. thing. You know, if, you, if it's even... You output an odd number. If it's an odd number, you output an even number. Okay, how about is it prime? Does that work? Oh, wait, I jumped to the slide. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't, because you can, if it's Same thing. You can output seven. Basically anything. Any. Uh, how about is it happy? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, anything. And the anything is the Rice Theorems bit. Mm. What? Okay. And that's just nice. and that's just extending that uh, argument from the halting problem to really any predicate on the output. Yeah. Okay. So that can be formalized like this, where you have a predicate that returns true. It always returns true or false if the thing is true and if the thing is false. And you have some function that you can point to and you say, it's true over here. And you have some other function that you can point to and say, it's false over here. When you apply the predicate to them, okay, and then you can build this bad program for any predicate. Right. I mean, this yeah. only fails when you feed feed it its own. But it it has to exist for every. It has to be deterministic for every input. Well, it can be like theoretically sound, but if you want a program that's useful, you can say like, oh, well, it has nothing to do with usefulness. Oh, oh. <laughs> my mistake. Sorry. That was clear to me a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that I guess that should have probably been in the first slide. But uh, okay. Can't you just like define like say like define meta programs? No, you can't do that. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's... I'm pretty sure they did that. Okay. Well, one one last thing. Okay. 
invented by Ezekiel Halting in 1874. I don't believe you. No, that's a lie. I wanted to do that because that was hilarious. <laughs> Is actually Alan Turing in 1936. Is that actually a dude, though? No, that's that's just a funny face I found on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's it. Huh. That's it? Yep, that's it. Oh, my God. Yeah.